Hello everyone, my name is Chen Lu, second year postdoc at Argon National Lab. Today I will present my project I'm doing at Argon, which is use of atomic layer deposition ALD to improve the industrial catalyst selectivity and longevity for propane dehydrogenation. So what is propane dehydrogenation? It's a reaction convert propane to propylene and hydrogen. Let's take a look at the figure on the left. The yellow bar is the propylene supply from steam cracking reaction. The green bar is the propylene supply from fluidized catalytic cracking reaction we see before year 2008. The propylene supply from those two processes can satisfy the propylene demand, which is a red curve in the figure. But after year 2008, there is a gap between propylene demand and propylene supply, which means we need new process for on-purpose propylene production. The red figure shows one of the processes from Honeywell UOP for propane dehydrogenation. Propane gas goes with the catalyst into those four flow bed reactors, and then catalyst separated from the products. The catalyst used in this process is platinum-based catalyst, which has one major drawback. The platinum nanoparticle sintered after reaction, which lowers the PT surface area. So what we did in this project is to do aluminum oxide ALD overcoating on those PT nanoparticles to prevent them from sintering. According to the literature study, before the propane dehydrogenation reaction, calcined those overcoated catalysts in air, the nanochannel can be formed on the ALD layer, which can provide access for the reactant propylene and product propane and product propylene to get in and get out of the catalyst. This ALD overcoating technique has been studied before, like in this science paper. After the aluminum oxide ALD overcoated on PT nonparticles for oxidative dehydrogenation of acid into acetylene, the palladium nonparticle sites were stabilized. This technique has also been used in liquid phase reaction. The aluminum oxide ALD overcoated on copper nonparticles can prevent the leaching of copper into water in wastewater treatment. So this slide shows how the catalyst support looks like. The catalyst support here, which is used to support the PT nanoparticles, is 116 inch diameter aluminum oxide extrudates. I put a picture here. The same extrudates with calcite under five different temperature to tune the surface area and pore size. From the table, we can see with the increase of the calcination temperature, the total surface area decreased from 280 to 8 square meter per gram, and the pore size increased from 7 to 16 nanometer. We named those support as ultra high, high, medium, low, and ultra low surface area support. After that, 25% of PT impregnated on each of those five supports. So why we investigated on different surface area support? Because for ALD, we knew less materials and the machine time will be used on low surface area substrate. But for catalysis, we need a high surface area to fully disperse PT nanoparticle as small as possible. From the STM images, those PT nanoparticles has average size around 0.9 nanometer. So the goal of this project is to stabilize the size of those nanoparticles. The only exception is for the catalyst on ultra-low surface area support. The particle size is 1.12 nanometer with a wide distribution. Also, from the chemisorb hydrogen amount on this catalyst is 15.9.
which is the lowest value among those catalysts, again shows larger PD particles formed. The hydrogen chemisorption experiment is to use hydrogen to chemisorb on the surface PD atoms. The larger the particle size, the less the hydrogen chemisorb based on the same PT weight percent. This ultra low surface area catalyst is a good material for ALD, but not for catalysis. So the ALD overcoating will not be applied on this catalyst. So this is a summary for the uh, catalyst preparation for different surface area support synthesized and then 0.5% PT loaded on each of them by UOP. After that, different cycles of aluminum oxide ALD was overcoated on PT catalyst by forged nano. Once we got those catalysts, we did the calcination and the performance test. The material deposited by ALD on porous supports, like the extruded here, is very complicated than the planar materials. To check the aluminum oxide can be deposited through the extrudates, TiO2 ALD was utilized to understand the precursor penetration behavior. Since it is not feasible to distinguish aluminum oxide deposited by ALD from aluminum oxide extrudates, we cannot ask aluminum oxide deposited by ALD to raise their hands. The right figure displays the EDS mapping analysis on medium surface area aluminum oxide extrudates after five cycles of TiO2 ALD. The two samples shown here were extracted from different parts of the extrudates with the help of focused iron beam. The red here represents the aluminum signal. The green here represents the titanium signal. We can see the titanium homogeneously dispersed throughout the aluminum oxide extrudates. The nitrogen physics option analysis was used to measure the surface area change after aluminum oxide ALD overcoating. We can see with the increase of the ALD cycles, the surface area decreased on ultra high, high, medium surface area support, which shows a very good control of aluminum oxide deposited by ALD versus the ALD cycle. For low surface area support, the average pore size is 16 nanometer, as listed in previous table, which is too large for at least seven cycles aluminum oxide ALD to change the surface area. The goal of this project is to stabilize the PT particle size after ALD. One thing we need to check is there should be no PT sintering after ALD. We picked this 10 cycle aluminum oxide ALD on low surface area support catalyst to see the PT particle size. From the STM image, the measured average particle size is 0.83 nanometer, which is the same as before ALD overcoating. This shows there is no change of the ALD for those PT nanoparticles. particle. This catalyst has the highest possibility for PT nanoparticle particle sintering because it spends the longest time in the ALD reactor and has a low surface area. So it is safe to conclude the ALD overcoating doesn't change the PT size. The nitrogen physiosorption analysis in previous slides shows with more ALD cycles, more aluminum oxide deposited on the support, but we are not sure the aluminum oxide overcoat on PT known particles or not. So again, we used hydrogen chemisorption to measure the exposed PT atoms from the PT known particles. Four he figures here show the results for ultra high high, medium, and low surface area catalyst. The black curve here represents the chemisorb hydrogen amount after ALD overcoating. So we can see with the increase of ALD cycles, the x-axis. The chemisorb hydrogen amount 
decreased the y-axis. This shows the gradual cover of PT neuron particles with additional ALD cycles. The red curve shows the chemisorbed hydrogen after air annealing. We see that red curves are above the black curves, which means that more surface PT atoms are exposed, which is due to the diamond channel formation from the ALD layer. This TEM image shows the PT particle size for fresh catalyst is 0.94 nanometer on this median surface area support catalyst and after 20 hours under reaction condition the average particle size for the spent catalyst is 0.92 nanometer so there is no PT nanoparticle change, size change for um, coated catalyst, we realized that those catalysts from UOP were designed for a year-long process, so steam treatment was used to force the PT nanoparticles to cinder to mimic the long-term effect on the reaction condition. So the lower red figure shows larger PT nanoparticles formed after steaming. To evaluate the performance for each catalyst, we divided each catalyst into two equal amounts. One tested without steaming, one tested after steaming. Since the PT non particle sintered after steam treatment, the propane conversion curve for the catalyst after steaming will be under the one without steaming. The propane conversion means the percentage of propane converted in the reaction which directly related to the longevity of the catalyst. So this project goal is to reduce the delta of propane conversion after steaming while minimizing activity reduction after ALD overcoating. I will use bar chart to show the propane conversion at the 10th hour for each catalyst. In other words, for the bar chart, the goal for this project is to reduce the green bar height, which represents the delta of propane conversion after steaming, and increase orange bar heights, which represents the steam catalyst activity, while maintain the total bar height similar, which represents the activity for the fresh catalyst after ALD overcoating. This slide shows the catalyst performance. Each figure represents the performance for catalysts on different surface area. Each column in each figure represents one catalyst. The x-axis is the ALD cycle number. The y-axis is the propane conversion. We can see with the increase of the ALD cycles, the green bar height decreased which means the drop of propane conversion after steaming and the orange bar height increased with increase of the ALD cycles which represents the propane conversion for the catalyst after steaming both shows the catalyst longevity improved after ALD overcoating the total bar height was similar which represents the propane conversion for fresh catalyst without steaming this shows the aluminum oxide deposited by ALD minimally block the PT active sites for the reaction. This is a slide to show the poplin selectivity, which means the percentage of poplin among all the products. Again, the x axis that's for the each catalyst after ALD cycle, y axis represents the product selectivity. In this bar chart, the orange bar here represents the poplin selectivity. We can see that for both fresh and steam catalysts with increase of the ALD cycles, the poplin selectivity, the orange bar height, slightly increased. So in conclusion, aluminum oxide was deposited by ALD to stabilize the PT nanoparticles 
on the industrial excluded catalyst after air annealing, more PT atoms were exposed and the steam treatment was used to mimic the long-term effect on the reaction condition. The catalyst longevity improved after the ALD overcoating and aluminum oxide deposited by ALD only minimally blocks the PT active size and the poplin selectivity was slightly increased after the ALD overcoating. So for this project, I would like to thank Chris Jeff Peter from Aga National Lab, Natalia Lee, Chris and Paul from Honeywell UOP, and Erling Ryan from Forge Nano. This project is funded by Advanced Manufacturing Office from DOE. Thank you, and I would like to answer any questions.